As we see here today in January of 2022, the word uncertainty is a great word to use to describe the market, whether it be the housing market, the crypto market, the stock market, or even the automotive market as well. There's a lot of uncertainty, nerves, and anxiousness surrounding what's going to happen this year, which is making it very difficult for people to decide where to invest their money. Now, I'm not an investing expert, and I'm certainly not somebody that can accurately predict the housing market, stock market, or crypto market. But what I do know is that over the last couple of months, I've been putting a lot of thought into what exactly exactly I want to do during this period of time in the market. And that's exactly what we'll be talking about today. In this video, I'm going to be breaking down where I'm going to be investing my money in 2022 for the highest return possible, despite the fact that things look a bit bleak in markets as a whole. So let's get started. Now let's just dive right into the video because we have a lot to cover on this topic. Now I've always considered myself to be an opportunistic investor, meaning I'm not really an expert in any sort of investing. I just like to put my money where I think it could give me the best return possible and I don't really have any sort of long-term investing strategy, though this is something that I've been trying to work on over the last couple of years. And that brings us to the very first investment that I will be making throughout 2022 and that is the stock market. And really there's two different categories of where my money is going to be invested. Number one is where I already have my money invested. You see, 2021, I bought quite a lot of crypto, and in 2020, I bought quite a lot of stocks. Near the end of 2021, I started actively selling a lot of the stock that I owned, and I ended up selling about 70%, but I still have 100% of my crypto portfolio and 30% of my stock portfolio, and I will probably end up keeping that throughout 2022. The reason is, is because like I said a few moments ago, the stock market and the crypto market as of January 2022 don't look super great. Um, unfortunately, corrections are an inevitable, inevitable part of market cycles, and eventually we're going to have a downturn in this market. We're going to have higher interest rates. We have very high PEs. And I'm not interested in selling either of these assets for a loss. I would rather just patiently hold and patiently wait until it makes sense to sell. Whenever it comes to Ethereum, I honestly don't know when it would be the best time to sell because there's a lot of different price targets that I've been researching on and hearing about, and I don't really know which one is the most realistic. I just plan on holding until it ultimately doesn't make sense to hold any longer. And the same goes for a lot of the stocks that I hold as well. I still have a handful of recovery stocks from the pandemic, and I also have some long-term holds as well. And I'll end up holding these for whatever approach appropriate time I need to in order to get the returns that I know that these stocks can give. Secondly, I'll also be contributing to my long-term investment portfolio as well. I have a separate portfolio with TD Ameritrade that I invest in long-term stocks that I plan on never selling until I retire. Things like ETFs and index funds. I put between $500 and $1,000 into this account every single month, and I will continue to do that throughout 2022 regardless of what happens with the market. It's very much a set it and forget it style investing, which is honestly my favorite type of investing because I'm definitely not an expert when it comes to the stock market. Now, I'm not going to sit here and tell you which stocks or which cryptos you should invest in because I'm definitely not the person to give advice with that. But what I will say is that whenever it comes to the stock market, buying and holding is always going to perform better than trying to time the market perfectly. And I think it's always a good idea to buy as long as you intend to hold long term, even if we're in a bear market. And that's exactly what I plan to do throughout this year. But also remember that it's not a good idea to invest money that you'll need to pull out anytime soon. And if you're wanting to invest in the bear market, only do so if you can hold on to those stocks for a very long time. The next place that I'll be investing my money is into Turo and my car sharing fleet. This is one that I laid off on quite a lot in 2020 during the pandemic. I virtually didn't buy any cars and I instead pivoted my investment focus into the stock market. Then in 2021, I laid up on the stock market and then really started ramping up the amount of cars that I was buying. And I plan on doing the exact same thing this year in 2022. I'll continue buying as many cars as I can through 2022, but overall, I'll be looking for cars that meet the Turo requirements, that have good maintenance records, or at least maintenance reputations, and of course, ones that are below market value. And because my cars must meet these three requirements, it's pretty difficult to find cars that are a good fit for what I need. This means that even though I would love to buy one car per week, it simply is impossible, and the ultimate goal is to buy about one per month. And on the same note, HP and I are also thinking about buying potentially another car for outdoorsy. As you guys may or may not know, we have a 29 foot RV that we've been listing on the Outdoorsy platform. And for those of you who don't know what Outdoorsy is, it's very similar to Turo, but you rent out camping and recreational vehicles instead of everyday vehicles. Now, the 29 foot RV has been doing pretty well, especially considering the fact that it's very large and not every single car can tow it. And even if you have a car that can tow it, you may not be comfortable towing it. So it's a very niche audience with a really small amount of potential rentals. So despite the fact that it's a very niche product with a small set of potential renters, it still has been doing very well. And this has 
has encouraged us into potentially looking at smaller RVs that can get towed with more everyday cars. Something like a teardrop camper could be a really cool alternative, though we've just kind of started looking at this and it certainly isn't anything serious. We would like to first see how our Ford Transit camper van does it outdoorsy before we start investing any more money onto this platform. But it's definitely on the horizon and it's definitely something we're looking at. But all in all, growing our car sharing fleet is definitely going to be a huge focus of 2022 and it's definitely where we're going to be investing the vast majority of our money. The third place I'm going to be investing my money is also the most speculative and it's something that many people cannot agree on. I feel like 50% of the people I talk to about this subject completely agree with me and think that we're on the exact same page. And then the other 50% think that I'm completely wrong and that I'm an absolute moron. Now, I don't know which one you think I am, but let's talk about it. Now, I'm a firm believer that we are going to be seeing a housing crash either in 2022 or 2023. And I definitely think that the housing market is going to slow down at some point this year. All signs point to the fact that we are in a massive real estate bubble right now. And I think it's a matter of time until it bursts and since prices crashing down. Now, do I think that we will see a 2008 housing crash? Probably not. But do I think we will see a substantial dip in housing prices? Absolutely. And whenever that point in time comes, I am prepared to jump onto it and buy as much real estate as I can get approved for. Now, the reason why this is speculative is because of the fact that it's all pending that the real estate market will crash or at least significantly fall. And this is simply something that many people cannot agree on. A lot of people think it will. A lot of people think it won't. And a lot of people think that it'll continue to go up forever. This is definitely something that is hotly debated. And whether you agree or not with me is totally up to you and what you've done your research on. But I am definitely a believer that the housing market will crash. It will go down and that will leave investors with a great opportunity to buy. But of course, what I buy, when I buy, and how I end up investing will all depend on how the market shakes out throughout this year and into next year, which only time will tell. And really lastly, and in my opinion, the most important and the best investment that somebody can make during times of uncertainty is investing in yourself. Now, I know that that sounds a bit cheesy, but it is so incredibly true. I think that times where the stock market is going down, or at least whenever the stock market is a bit uncertain, it's a great time to start investing in those projects that you've wanted to invest in. Starting a business, starting a side hustle, starting a website, or selling some sort of product. There are a bunch of different things that you can invest in into yourself that can return so so much more than you would have received if you would have invested into the market, into crypto, or even into real estate. And I know that this is something that is going to be an absolute huge focus for both HP and myself throughout this year and into next year as well. Investing in the ventures we're already doing, expanding on the projects we want to expand on, as well as trying out new things. These are all things that we'll definitely be focusing on this year because I truly believe that these will produce way more returns than any sort of stock market investment we could make. All in all, whenever it comes to investing during a bear market or during a recession, I think that there are two things that you can do that will really benefit you in the long run. Number one is to develop a game plan. I think it's a good idea to try to invest your money where it makes the most sense, whether that be in the market and crypto and housing or into yourself or a side hustle. But I also think it's a good idea to, to an extent, not pay attention to the news and not pay attention to what the stock market is showing or doing on a day-to-day -day basis. Whenever stocks start to go down, I completely tune out of it altogether. In fact, I have not read any sort of financial newsletter, financial article, and I haven't even looked at my portfolio in a couple of weeks because I simply don't want to know how it's doing. It just makes me depressed and I know I'm not going to sell. So what's the point of putting me through that? It's always fun to look at your portfolio on a weekly, monthly, or daily basis if your portfolio is doing well, but it can be really discouraging if your portfolio isn't doing well. And the reality is if you're well invested, then it won't matter what your stocks are doing today. All that's going to matter is what your stocks are doing a year, two years, 10 years down the line. So there's no use in looking at it on a daily basis because the reality is it's probably gonna to continue to go down at least for the near future. But if you are somebody who in the past has invested in the stock market rather than pursuing some of your personal projects, I do think that 2022 could be a great year to pivot that focus and to invest your money into yourself rather than into more traditional investment. Like always, you guys, I hope that you enjoyed this video and I hope it gave you some insight into where I'm focusing my money and my time this year to try to get the best return as possible. If you guys have any questions, comments, if you have anything to add, if you disagree with me about the housing market, make sure to leave a comment down below because I would love to hear it. And like always, make sure to hit that like button hit that subscribe button and hit the notification bell and I will see you guys in the next video.